Hi, I'm Kristen Stewart. The issue of acquaintance rape has been very important to me ever since I played a survivor of sexual assault in a movie called Speak. Playing someone whose world is turned upside down because of a brutal rape really forced me to understand what a devastating effect acquaintance rape has on a young woman. We've all heard horror stories of women who are yanked into dark alleys and then assaulted and raped by a stranger. But I'm sure that you're thinking that that would never happen to you. The truth is most rapes occur with someone that you know. Sometimes it's a friend or someone you've just met. It could even be a boyfriend. This is called acquaintance rape. Acquaintance rape is very, very common. Uh, in the vast majority of cases, you'll know your assailant. Um, it will be somebody that you've had a relationship with. Maybe you're in a relationship with. Maybe you've had sex with this person before. And at, at this point, you're saying no and, and he's saying yes. I went on a summer program and I had a boyfriend and I liked him. He was a friend of mine that was on one of the sports teams at my school. One of my friends set us up on a blind date. It was somebody that she knew. So when we talk about an acquaintance, right, we're talking about someone with whom you have an acquaintanceship. We went out and um, he was supposed to bring me back home, but he didn't. He drove to an isolated parking lot and he assaulted me. He started like, trying to touch me and I didn't want to go any further and I told him I didn't want to, but he didn't care. He just kept doing what he wanted to do to me and What's so scary about it is that it was somebody that I knew and I thought I could trust. Unfortunately, Tony's story is not uncommon. The shocking reality is that college women are four times more likely to be sexually assaulted than the general population. And it's easy to understand why. It's your first year away from home. Your parents aren't around to keep an eye on you. You've got all the freedom in the world to party and to go out. You're meeting new people and you want to make good impressions. It was my first week of school, and it was my first year into college. I've always been a nice person. I've always not exactly been flirty, but I've always opened myself up to others. Sometimes all of this makes it hard to follow the rules that you've heard before. So how can you be more aware? How do you help a friend? Let's learn from Sam's story. Freshman year is full of fun and parties, and Sam, who had been one of the most popular girls in her high school, was taking it all in. But after just three months on campus, her life changed forever. Shortly before winter break, Sam and her new best friend, Nicole, were waiting to go into class one day, when two frat guys noticed them and came over to say hi. The boys flirted with them, and Sam and Nicole flirted back. Next thing you know, they're exchanging numbers, and the girls invite them over for a party in their dorm room. So the following week, the guys show up at Sam's dorm with pizza and beer. Brother inviting him to a party. Awesome party going on right now. Sweet! Where? Sweet. Uh, right down the street where? Let's okay. do it. Oh, let's go. Sam really wants to go and spend more time with Brad, but Nicole wants to call it a night. So, 30 minutes, you guys want to go to the party? You go? I'm there, of course. You're kidding me. Okay. We actually have class. I hate to kill the vibe, but I have to. I have to dance Samantha, you, you coming, all right? Huh? I love that. Yeah, well, come on. You can, you're a big girl, you can go by yourself, she can study all night and everything, that's fine, you know? Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm always, man, I got three exams left. I can't go alone, come on. Exactly. Sam does everything she can to try to convince Nicole to come out with her. Hey, no, she didn't look by yourself. Hey, girl, you're going to school. Nicole doesn't budge, Sam battles with herself. 
and ultimately decides keep to go. Keep walking, keep walking. Yes! You'll see her again, I She's promise. She's coming! She's do it. Let's go. Huh? You I'll call you, I'll call you later, okay? Okay, okay. okay. so let's stop right here. This is a tricky situation, but one that comes up all the time at college. Sam knows that she probably shouldn't go to the party alone, but she doesn't want to blow her chances with Brad. So what do you do in that circumstance? Use the buddy system. Don't go any place alone. If you're going to go out and meet somebody, I would recommend meeting in public and maybe even going like on a group date with other people, with other friends. The buddy system may sound lame, but it works. I mean, you can be independent, but be smart. Whether you're a drinker or not, you're most likely going to encounter alcohol in college. This may be a surprise to you, but alcohol is the number one date rape drug. It's true. With most sexual assaults in college, alcohol is either being used by the perpetrator or by the victim. If you're intoxicated, you can't legally consent to sex. And did you know that silence, i.e. not saying anything, never equals consent? Even if having a drink seems pretty harmless, remember, alcohol seriously impairs your judgment and it affects your ability to make sound decisions. Now, this is important. If a guy is aggressive in any way, shape, or form, or if he makes you feel pressured or even remotely uncomfortable, this is a sign that it's time to get away. Maybe I didn't pick up on some red flags of kind of weird behavior, of being jealous or controlling. The first time I met him, I wasn't too crazy about him. He was really aggressive, and I don't know, I thought it was just me, so I decided to give it a second try, and I went out with him. There were a lot of weird things going on, like sometimes he would like pin my arms down and it, or he would just get really jealous or like hit the dog like there are weird things that should have been like whoa if someone is being aggressive in any way shape or form giving you more alcohol particularly when there's alcohol involved if there's aggression you need to stop you need to get away you need to look for help <laughs> Alright guys, it's not just up to girls. You too can make a difference. Most guys are good guys, and not all guys are disrespectful to women. But sexual assault is your issue too. If you see a friend acting aggressively or treating someone disrespectfully, it is also okay to call them out on it. One of the most important things is for men to speak to other men about their behavior. To step up and to say, what you're doing is wrong, or why are you giving her another drink, or she's clearly uncomfortable, she needs to go home now. <laughs> Brad and Sam then leave the party, and Brad walks Sam home. They're both drunk. So in this situation, Sam is doing the right things. She's saying no, she wants to go home, and Brad clearly has in his mind that he wants to have sex with her. So he takes her to a party, he buys her with alcohol, he insists on walking her home. So he has this, this plan in his mind of, of what he wants to do. I want to go home and sleep too. I'm going to go to your house. So, I'm Please, gonna, I, don't, I don't know. I don't want I'm to go. I'm going to go to my house after I go to your house. No. And we open the door for you.